In this part, we will going to talk about the concept of composition. The composition is a concept in Java that is a property of a class is in fact, instead of being a primitive type property, is actually an instance of another class. For example, if I create a property of type string, so I have established a composition. So now what we will be learning is how to use composition between two user-defined classes. First of all, we need to understand why would you want to have a composition. Let's take, for example, I would like to add a phone number to each of my employees. Now, in a given organization, employee is not the only individual that has a phone number. Buildings have phone numbers, customers have phone numbers, and there are so many other components within an organization that have phone numbers. So instead of me having to define the phone number property in each and every class, I can now have a separate class called phone with the properties of area code and phone number. And whenever I need to introduce a property called phone in any of my classes, I can just create an instance of phone class. And that way I can reuse this phone class in as many classes as required to have a phone number. To start the process, we will going to first of all create this new class called phone. And this will be a very short, a brief class, no main, because this is a supportive class. It will not going to run on its own. So this is my phone class. In my phone class, I will introduce a couple of private string properties, like um, area code. And I'm going to create another private string property called phone number. Okay. Then I'm going to create a default constructor. And this default constructor will simply going to initialize area code to some kind of an area code and a phone number property to some kind of a hypothetical phone number property. And then I will like to have a getter and setter for each one of my properties, which I will going to create public. And I'm going to use the same concept as I introduced earlier on that I could write my entire uh, method on one line. That way I can fit more code on the same line. Um, of course, it's going to give me an error. But once I fix it, it probably will be just fine. So set area code. It's a void. And the next one is line is get phone number. And I return the phone number property. And then the last one is set phone number. And this is a void. So it doesn't require a string to be returned and rather we will be passing in a parameter of type string which will be used to initialize phone number to a value so that's basically my phone class pretty much that's all I need to do this is my phone class no errors couple of properties a constructor to initialize each property getters and setters for each one of my properties. That's all the phone number class is. Now let me go back to the employee class where I would like to now introduce a property of the class right up here, a private property of the class called phone. Okay, so I'm calling this PHEMP, which is phone employee. So I don't have to worry about now declaring area code and phone number as the local properties. I can just simply create an instance of this class and use it as many times as I, as I may like. So all I'm doing is whenever the constructor gets called, as other properties get initialized, okay, but since this is an object, it will going to get instantiated simply by calling 
the constructor of this phone class, okay? So right now, whatever is the state of this, we're gonna test that. So I have, I'm already displaying um, an employee's ID and employee's pay. So to this process, I will now going to add employee phone number. And I would like to pull out um, the phone number of the employee. Now, notice the sequence over here, okay? So in order to pull out the phone number of the employee, I can't really say temp object dot get phone number. Rather, I need to, first of all, using the temp object, call a property called PHEMP. And then using PHEMP, I go about calling get the area code and then get the phone number. And then that will going to return some output back to me in a format that I really want to see. Okay. So now if I go about and run this uh, program the way it is, let me try to have a slash n in here so that phone number actually gets to display on a new line so it'll be easier for you to read where the phone number is. So let me run this and now you can easily see that employee number two has a phone number 999-555-5555 and so does employee number one has the same phone number. So if I go about and create employee number three, let's say, uh, with an ID, he also has the same phone number because I haven't changed the phone number on any of my employees. It's exactly the same for all three of the employees. They're all going by the default values. So now I'm going to go back to my phone class and make a little change here. So I'll say, okay, if it's a phone number like this, put it out in parentheses. Just leave a space be before the phone number and close the area code in parentheses. I made some changes, save the changes, I'm back to my class, and if I rerun this class, you'll be able to instanti instantly see the difference, okay? And now, notice that there are two spaces in here. The reason is because one space is coming from the class itself, the other space I am putting over here, so I don't need to put the space here anymore. I can actually get rid of the space, and I'm gonna try to run this program, and now you see there's only one space between the area code and the phone number. So these are some of the things that I can play around with. Um, and notice the sequence of chaining that's extremely important because get area code and get phone number are not local methods of employee class. They're rather local methods of phone class. So in order to call them, I must have an instance of phone class. So what I do is I call the local object, which is the employee class object, dot the phone class object dot now the methods in the phone class is pretty much like in order to get to anything in the phone that is non-static you must have an instance of the phone class all I did is I take I took an instance of phone class and make it a property of the employee class so every time I create a, an employee the employee gets assigned a phone number that phone number is a two-part entity, area code and a phone number, and that is kept as an object under the phone. So if I would like to mess with this object, I would like to change the area code or change the phone number, I must call the setter on that class. And I can use the getter to pull out the values. We'll talk a little bit more about it in the next tutorial. Thank you.